In this video, we will be covering the following topic. Relation between multiple table, primary key, foreign key, MySQL alias, MySQL subqueries. Before proceeding, if you haven't already, I recommend checking out my video on learn MySQL function. Without further ado, let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. Multiple tables. We've been working with tables, but we have worked with one table, but there is no relationship between both two tables. So how we can create those relationships? So we are going to understand. A table can consist multiple constraints. What are constraints? So constraints are, are those where you want to add some condition to follow the column. So whenever you want to update the record or something, you add some constraint or condition before adding to that table. So one of the constraint is primary key. Primary key is what it says that whenever you add primary key to that, that column, it became unique. So you cannot add duplicate in that. And also whenever you add primary key, that can be a link to other tables. So primary can have a relationship built with other tables as well. To have relationship, you must use foreign key as well. But foreign key will work with the associate primary key of that other table. So we are going to understand in practice, what we are going to do is we will be creating a table. Now, without creating by using the command, we are going to do by this way. I'm creating a table on here. So we already have one class here. So which have some data. You can see, right? This has some section and class. So we can create a candidate table. So I'm going to create candidate First, if you click here, you get a name. So first is ID you want to put, which is going to be primary key. Just check this one and that will become primary key. Next, if you click, you will generate a value. You can change this to name or student name. And from here, if you double click, you will get a drop down as well. So avoid these functions. Those, those are which have braces. Avoid those. Use the simple name thing so i should be using a tiny text or small text or long text all works you say not null to tell that you cannot send a null value here next i want to put their age okay which will will be a int or tiny int both works if you are not able to find it you can also write tiny int last we should having be having a foreign key so foreign key uh, for that I will have class id okay class id would be so this class id this id would be present in this this will be same as what we have did here. So understand what was there. Go to this information and go to the column. You will get ID what is this type. So use the same type. Go back to this and take the same int. So we have not mentioned this is a foreign key. Now you can see in the bottom you will see indexes. So whenever you create a primary key, you will it will generate an automatically primary key index. So because it's a unique and you can find the record quickly. In foreign key, we don't have listed. So we are going to create a foreign key from here. So how to create, create, uh, just write the name of the foreign key. This is class FK. Okay. In order to create a foreign key, you must be having a primary key of that class. So there are many multiple way to create primary key of any, any table. While creation of that table, you can do it like this. Create table, the table name. Whenever you write the ID and the primary key at the end, you can just mention which column you want to mention, put that in the bracket. Or you can also write constraint and saying that 
primary key at the name you can just mention what constant you want to put then you add the primary key and the within the bracket the last what we are going to do is now is alter the table means we are going to change which is existing table alter class or you can use the same thing here then add constraint then say pk the id primary key of id then say primary key and put primary and the key key is a function key you put which id you want to do now if you execute duplicate entry okay so what is uh, saying that you have a duplicate entry in that record if you run this you will get a data whole thing is not unique to in order to make this a primary key you have to remove those duplicate value either you find a one which column is not duplicate so i don't think so there is any one which is which can be duplicate other than id so let's change this use the update key to change this we have many other way so first update set id i want to change the id of 8 id equals to not id is equals to as uh, we have to take a combination signs and section both are having this same we can take status to is false before before doing anything you can always verify writing the select statement okay i will get a one value so now you can use this one to change your value so one i want to change to how many one two three four four we can change to four if you run this one Let's see. Now this has been changed. Same we can use for other. So I don't think so. We have double. We can yeah. We can delete the other thing. We have duplicate as well. So we can delete delete on this one. Whereas ID is eight eight or ID is twelve. Both all the table eight and twelve will get deleted. So now you check this. So I have only four. One, two, three, four data. Now you can work with this. Okay. Now I want to add a fire primary key. Okay. I this is where we are doing it. Okay. I am going to execute this query. Now you can see this alter has been changed. Now you will have a primary key. So now go back to this where we are trying to add foreign key over here. That should be. And here, yeah. Now you find the table. I want to connect to class. Now you will able to get. If not, I guess uh, you need to cancel and reopen this one more time. So go to setting. Now go to foreign key. Now say F K I D. Class ID, or I can just say class because it's going to associate with a class. So this is my class. So I will get whole thing here. Now the reference you can just put which reference. Something is missing over here. One more time. Okay, candidate we have not created. We have to create one more time. So now I go to new Excel. Now here. Under session here, I want to create a table. Create table. And the dates. Say ID. Int. That is fine. Primary key fine. Name. Or name. Just name. We can keep tiny. 
medium text not null yes saying age saying end here you can use the foreign key the foreign key of that so here i am going to add class id which is going to be end i guess that's it this is not required so you can just delete if it's not been deleting let go to foreign key say fk class find that session class okay whatsoever we cannot create just right now so we can come and create let's create this table for now simply i'm creating this table so we have a table called candidate now now i want to add a constraint foreign key okay and let's, let's add some some value is one saving one value at least and let me try one more time here going this to this one and adding foreign key fk class now this i am able to so what i did is i find that table of this table and i put a foreign key of for this one now whenever i want to add it will always associate find a value so if you write this query and now you can also add value so you cannot place a number which is not present in the class so in this class you can see we have 1 2 3 4 4 so if you try to add which is not present then what will happen is it will throw an error you cannot update child row so you always have to pick one of that value and add it here let's add by altering the table what we saw that i had same name in the somewhere or any of that table which have same name so whenever you write a constant it has to be also unique i just added with one so i got a new unique constraint for this foreign key so now i i should be able to get my result so go to this candidate the foreign key section you can also delete and change this one okay see there's no issue at all so go back to your sql query now we can achieve what you want to do adding some value which is 2 4 now say apply you will able to get entry 1 okay i guess uh, this one cannot be added so i have to add 2 here now if i apply it should be able to execute so next topic we are going to understand is sub queries sub queries is a query that is nested within another query the outer query called the main query uses the result of the inner query called the sub query to filter data calculate aggregate values or join tables we have variety of types of sub queries so the first sub query we have already learned in this session you know that was scalar operand so it returns exactly one column value from one row we saw in that case statement that was the sub query the first sub query we have learned so how to write that case statement right case select case the statement which case you want to do say when what condition if my marks is greater than 50 then say pass when my marks is less than 50 then say fail and say hint the case and say which table you want to do it i want to get class okay and this uh, i should be have understanding the same table name so i have mark average marks mm, okay we don't have any average we can put 50 we can put 50 45 70 89 okay and apply it so this got updated now come back to this and now run your case use session 
now I'm selecting running this statement. Okay, marks is not present, so we have average marks, average marks. Now you run this query, you will get a relevant data. So you can see we have four first was null because what happens to this? It doesn't fall in any of this case because 50 is neither greater than 0 nor not less than 50, just equal to 50. It says, you can say pa pass as well for that person. He is as secure. Or or you can add a condition which will have that greater than value. This also is correct. So everything will be pass and fail. So there are two person pass, two person has failed. So this is the first subquery we understood. The next we have comparison using subqueries. Using before or after any of the comparison operator that is sub one of these subqueries. What we just taught is this operator. All the operator what we write, those is one of the subquery. What happens in this subquery is this whole subquery. How this get executed? So this is a separate subquery. This becomes in one set. And this also becomes in another set. Right? Because each have different different functions. So first of all, this will get executed. How this will get executed, we'll just check like this. That value, whatever value he gets, if 48 is greater than that value or not, which is 0 or 1, it will get 0 or 1 value. Right? The same applies to this uh, this one, if it is greater than that value or not. 80. Let's take 80. See, that is true. So that will become true or false to that record. Then this case will execute. This whole condition will like that execute. So we have three nested subqueries. First is this subquery. Then we have second outer one. Then last one is this one. Hope you understood. The second was comparison. So we compare. Likewise, we have plus, minus, greater than, not equals to, not equal to, null safe, equal. Also, we have this null safe like this. We can also check equals to in the between. If you execute, you will get the result, but it also checking null safe means it's checking null. With uh, null safe, you just add one more wherever you want, that will also check the null. The next subquery with any, all, in, or sum, a type of subquery that uses a comparison operator to compare a value in main query to the result of that subquery. These keywords modify the comparison operator to indicate how comparison should be performed. So let's see some example. So if, let's say if you have any function, you want to use any function. So let's assume in this scenario, we have so many numbers and we can use to find any n like that. So what if, if I want to find some data which has marks with uh, 34 or 90 or 33 or 79 or 55 of any of that value, if that falls, then give me that those results. So this, this is some uh, set of value, but uh, what we can do is we can create another query also. So how to create another query, believe I can use select connect where, where I have uh, marks more than 80%. Okay. Which is, which has very good marks who has very good marks that we, that value we can put inside here. Okay. And you can say if that math is greater than, so here I required something, one value at least. We have to get one value from this person. Okay, this was missing. So if I have equals to greater than this one, first let's check, execute this statement. We have three data and uh, that I want to get from, get it from here where id equals to any. This is a condition plus any statement. So what happens, we are figuring out within those 
statement with that who has more than 80 and then we are you can add more condition let's let's see what condition we get so we get on obviously we get three data then you can add more condition this will tell you any of that value so better version we have in statement so if id in okay i guess that's a where clause should be there where id in these data so if you have any of that then you better give those values so this also works the same way difference between in and any could be is that in operator test for equality while any test for match of any kind any operator is more flexible than in operator because it allows for a wider range of matches however the any operator can also be less efficient because it's evaluate the sub query for each row in the outer query the next function we we can use is sum value the sum operator in mysql is a alias for any operator it is used to compare a value to the list of value in sub query the sum operator returns true or false so sum will give sum of the value not everyone so it will just give you each value of that part so if i just change to let me copy and write two three statement you were one is any you have to use equals and we have sum as well also you have to write equal over here equal any operator you have to mention both every every three statement will give three data that is correct because we have short value we have can be uncertain value okay so right now i don't have good example to give you but it differentiates with uh, if you have a uncertain value when you select a query okay the next sub query we have row sub query returns a single row more than one column you can use this comparison operator as well. row sub queries are often used in where clause of a select statement let's say i have this one query okay and and want to find another which has marks equals to this sub query this whatever we have just mentioned i want to list those so what i am doing is i am only getting those marks not the whole column so i get the those record numbers right so that will be present here then i am going to check that marks so if you run you will only it will get to that marks which is equals to this one so whichever is marks equal equivalent to that that will give you so it works when you have relation between two tables then you can figure out better way you also can add two three table let's say you have id but you have mentioned the order here uh, but here you have to place braces tell that this is the arrangement we have given this has to be like this then if you run it is returning more than one which is good we can use sum in this case right see so what i'm doing is i'm collecting the data and if i just say marks it has to be equals to that id and mark marks should be equivalent to that but what is happening is it's it's uh, showing sub query returns more than one row I means this whole sub query this this one is uh, not exact one we am getting more than so you cannot use equal here so equal works when you have only one value not the record okay in this if you have more record then use any sub query count like in or some you can use any anything any any also will work so this is the difference between a simple operator or any operator then this will work with record okay this will give you a relevant uh, result hope you you will do understood the next we have sub query with exist or not exist exist operator test for existence of the rows in the result set the exist operator returns true if the sub query returns one or more rows and false if it returns no rows opposite is the not exist function let's see that in an example this connect table is already exist so what if the there is another table which i'm not sure that is present or not i can say parrot table exist or not so if that exist within that code put this into that bracket 
please execute this one so what have what is happening if this is true then only it will get executed let's see i know this parrot is not there so it will not execute this parrot will show parrot is not available not exist just say not over here the opposite of that if not exists then it's not executing this whole table this connect is not executed because i have just put negative negative of this condition so if that not exists but it does exist which is true and this whole is false that's why this statement is not executing so we can use different table as well which both have exist so i'm i'm not sure that table is exists or not so this way we can check see this executed but it is not showing the tables right second last we have correlated sub queries this that contains a reference to a table in a parent that also appear in this outer set correlated sub query are often used to answer questions that involves comparing values in different rows of a table for example write statement like this one and say this is c okay c will become the alias of this uh, table with the c keeping the mind in c that c is my data id equal or greater than i'm writing another sub query called select simple statement form candidate as well c where c id let me just see what we have in this we have class id over here so we can use class id equals to the c id if that is true then give me all data more than that value this should be cd this is different that is different pt we can use cd dot id to figure out that value so i have got which is equal to that id and cd is only 4 so id which is more than 4 if you execute this one we will get one result this whole thing is a correlated sub query you cannot specify it differently you cannot just execute it has to be part of this that's why this is correlated sub query let's see another example suppose our class has a large number of record and we want to find all the ids that are greater than 1 we can use limit clause to create an inner sub query and then pass the result of the sub query to outer sql query we will write felix star from class and apply limit over here and say only two record i want to get it right that will become a sub query so selex star from this will become my whole table okay and you can say this is a table called new table and then you can also add condition where this new db dot id than one i know this will work the same way but to tell you how this works so this is form sub queries hope you understood so far we have covered all the types of sub queries I hope you find this video informative and that you learned something new. And if you have any question, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. I am Atindinath, and this has been Bit Science. I will see you in the next video.